Conversations. Conversations with, with S.D. SD Booker. Booker. And that's so powerful you said that because I came to the realization through Brother Phil, you know, what karma really is. And it makes sense. You know, karma not really a punishment. It's so we can experience what that person's feeling. Yes. We, we judge them. It's not to punish us. It's to so we can learn compassion. And so, right. yeah, so that's why I try not to. I really, I really focus on, I don't bat a thousand at it, but I really focus on not judging. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things that I can't really relate to because are not joking about it because I don't want to have to come back and learn that lesson. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to, I won't even joke about short people, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm you know, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> okay, I'm, you don't want to be I, no, I don't want to, I don't have to come okay, back and learn. Okay. I don't have to come back and learn that lesson. I, I, I can't relate to the short man oh, syndrome. Yeah. So, but, it, but if I'm making fun of them, I'm being judgmental, I'm being incompassionate, you know, I got to come back and experience that. Uh, I'm good. I, yeah, I don't have, I don't want to take that class. <laughs> so I'm going to, okay. I'm going to love, I'm going to love everybody. Try to love yeah. everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And that's, that's how we should be. That's the balance of finding ourselves, you know, and I believe once we come to that is when, you know, our soul really will, you know, elevate to what, what it is that we were wanting to do. We were hoping that we would do. I just, one little thing I'll touch on is when I had my death experience, one of the first things that happened when I, you know, was on the other side and, and, and immediately you can see everything, your whole life is in front of you. You, it's like, you, you can see past, present and future all at the same time. And I was disappointed. I was so disappointed. How did I forget a mission this big? How did I forget it? And then I seen, and you know, the the um, beings that were around me at the time kept telling me, don't don't be so harsh on yourself. They would tell me that, don't be so harsh on yourself. You forgot. And I'm wow. like, but how could I be so crazy? How could I be so stupid to forget something that huge? That's yeah. important. And you start to realize, and even my small children now, I'll ask them from time to time. Do you remember what it was that you were coming here to do? And they'll think, and it gets them in a totally different mindset. They'll think, and, you know, I just want them to continually have that in the forefront of their mind as they're growing up. What are you here for? Don't forget. What is it? Only you know. What is it? Don't forget what you came to do because you will be really disappointed in yourself because it's kind of like your soul sent you came here to, to, um, you know, a test. You gave yourself a test. Okay. I'm going to go here and hopefully I pass this test because then I can elevate to the next level. You come here, you totally forget you're sucked in by all this matrix. You're this and that. And when you get to the other side, the disappointment is pretty bitter. I can, I can, I'll never forget that feeling. But again, I, you know, I, I had a chance to come back and and correct it, which I'm so grateful for. Yeah. You're, you're, you're fortunate. And wow. I, I would be skeptical uh, about hearing that, but I've heard a couple of stories like that um, where people saw their lives flash before them and saw uh, the mistakes they made, the people they hurt, uh, the judging themselves and being too hard on themselves and and all what you, you just said. And uh, they came back, they had an opp- another opportunity to come back and uh, get back on course of their mission. And so that's a beautiful thing. It's like you were so set to go to school and take care of business, but you got mm-hmm. distracted. You got distracted with the frat parties. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. have, you, have you, have you, are you familiar with what's called the Akashic records? No, I'm not. Oh, you might want to look into that. It's pretty cool. Um, so the Akashic records, there's a record of everything, everything that's ever happened in every individual's life is recorded in what's called an Akashic record, uh, earth records in, in, a, in the quantum field, which makes wow. sense. Everything we do puts out a vibration of some type. So it's all recorded. You literally can tap your Akashic records. A, a death experience actually allows you to tap the Akashic records or even a near death experience or an accident or anything like that actually allows you, and you can do it. There's practices you can do where you can learn to access your Akashic records and it's very, very helpful for healing. Back to what you said about women that have been traumatized or, or men in either, you know, men, you know, that's something we didn't touch on back there, but 
a, a traumatized man is a whole different thing as far as being able to be the container he can be. That's that's a problem too. But let's just say anybody that's been traumatized, learning to tap into the Akashic records and see on the quantum field is something that we have the ability to do. All of us have our third eye. The pineal gland is the most powerful thing in the universe. There's no transmitter that, that there is that they've ever been able to make that comes anywhere close to the power of the third eye. Wow. Literally, they've done studies where they're attacking, they're, they're, they do, they, they hook these people up so they can read their signals and they'll, they'll have people like totally on opposite sides of the world. And they'll, they'll, I can't remember how they're doing it, but somehow all of a sudden they see these people's, these, it's cool because you can see the video. They'll have them recorded live on other sides of the world. And all of a sudden all their actions start to sink. Like this one puts their hand up. They put their hand up at the same time. They and, and it shows how that the brain can sync with somebody else on the other side of the world and how that nobody is living to themselves. Not even one thought we have is our own. That wow. thought that you put out in the Akashic field goes to everybody in the whole universe, not limited to the earth. Wow. wow. So, so when you see that, the implications of how we live are so huge how important it is for us to have that kind of healing positive energy that we're meant to have rather than a destructive negative you know depressed type of luciferian energy i would call it that way but but that's the, the hardest thing to do is fight against that when it's pushing you down i know from experience when i had cancer literally you feel this force pushing you down 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 like you're you're struggling you're fighting you're doing all you can to push it off to to raise up and there's times where you just feel like, you know, it's a losing battle, but you can't give up. Right. And you will, you will eventually, because again, positive energy is so many times more powerful than the negative force. You can't even compare it. One man, one, one, one man and one woman, just one couple that's on the same, no matter what the relationship is, that's on the same, um, that can sink themselves to that energy and move it forward. They can overthrow hundreds of thousands of people that are negative. I'm telling you. Oh, I believe that. Just by putting it out in the Akashic records, the others will start to change, just like that experiment called the hundredth monkey effect. Have you seen that? Yes, I have. I'm telling you. Yeah. We have so much power. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I uh, and, and we'll we'll wrap up on that note. Um my hope is for the woman and the man to know the true power, uh, manage our egos, come together for the greater good, and uh, think about the children, the offspring. But we have to think about something bigger than ourselves. It's like mm -hmm. we're so important, but then we so, we're so unimportant at the same time because there's something yeah. so much bigger than us. But yeah. What we're tasked to do makes us so important, but others are tasked also. And so we're just one piece in this full body. Yeah. So uh, would you like to, we want to do this. I don't know. I might break the segment. I'm going to definitely break the segment up uh, in a, quite a few segments, but uh, we hope to come together uh, quite often. You know, you and I talk about this off, off camera and uh We'll, we'll see. We'll see what, what the people react reaction is. Um, but do you want to close out with yeah, anything? Yeah, well, this is, you know, you know, well, I would just say I agree with you. This is the beginning of our revolution that you spoke about. Let's just do it. Let's I'm, do it. I mean, I feel like I feel like it's the I honestly feel like it's the most important thing on our planet right now is this revolution to bring bring the uh, masculine and feminine energies to where they understand and flow together, because, again, it's the basis of life itself. How are we going to fix anything else on the planet without fixing this first? I believe it's the foundation. We can try to build, but if it's a broken foundation, it's not going to build. Our building is going to fall. 